What's up, guys? Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So sometimes I just want to cover an add-on because it's fun. Um, that's the case today. We're checking out an add-on that allows you to apply a shader that makes your objects look like clay inside a blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So clay Doh is a clay shader that you can download from the Blender Market. I will link to it in the notes down below, but basically what it is is it's a tool that allows you to make your models look like clay inside of Blender. So it uses shaders in order to do things like uh, simulating fingerprints and cracks and other things like that, and it's really easy to use and it's also a lot of fun. It comes with 13 different presets that you can quickly apply to objects inside of Blender in order to simulate this clay material. Um, you can also adjust their nodes as as well. There's a ton of stuff that you can adjust in order to adjust the way that they look um, as well. And that's pretty easy to use too. And then in addition, it also has a procedural clay system for uh, text and shapes. So you can use this in order to make clay looking text inside of Blender. So let's take a look at it inside of Blender. And there's a lot of like really interesting examples down below of the way that artists are using this. This is actually a really fun way to create models inside of Blender. And so if we jump over into Blender, there's a couple different files that come along with this. There's a file that comes with the different presets that are inside of it. You can actually save this in your asset browser so that you can access these later. And it gives you kind of an idea of what's available in here. Um, these are gonna look better if I switch them over to rendered mode, but that seems to, for whatever reason, make my screen recorder stop capturing. So we're not going to do that right now, but you can select each one of these and see the different things that you can adjust about them um, using the different uh, shader nodes down below. So for example, let's say that we were to zoom in on, I think this might be the bubblegum one down below. So there's options over here for the level of displacement that's in here. So the global displacement, as well as the roughness, which is going to set how uh, reflective this is. But then down below, there's some other things we can do as well. So we can randomize um, where all those splits are going to be. And we can also adjust things like the fingerprints. So we can set the intensity of the fingerprints in here, as well as the scale of those fingerprints as well. So it actually gives you a ton of control over um, what's actually being placed in here. Notice how this even allows you to adjust like how pronounced the impressions that the fingerprints would have made in here. You also get complete control over the cracks that are placed in here. So you can adjust the level of detail that's in here. It's all being created procedurally. So each one of these has its own different settings and different things that you can do. Um, they're all gonna look a little bit different, but they're all really interesting. But then if I open up a new model, and I've saved these in my asset library so I can get to them really easily. Um, but let's say that we were to open this up and apply like the bubblegum material in here. So we can bring that bubblegum material in here and then we can adjust things like the finger scale um, because these are way too big, right? So we're going to bring these down a little bit and we're also going to bring the impressions down because otherwise it looks a little bit weird. Those are kind of like going over the edges. But notice how this is really easy to make these changes to. So you can adjust like the crack displacement that's in here as well as the crack scale and the level of detail that's in here with the cracks too. So again, all of these are easy to change using the settings inside of the shader right here. And so you could have some fun with this. Like let's say for example, that you were to bring in like a couple of meta balls or something like that. So we'll just duplicate this, duplicate it again, and duplicate it again. So something like this. So if you bring all those together, and then you apply like the ceramic material to it, for example, we can bring the size of that down a little bit, but this is actually like working with clay um, in the sense that you can actually move everything around. And you can see how that, that clay is going to adjust with it. And then you can come in here and you can adjust the shader in order to get your different looks, other things like that. So it's actually really easy to use once you bring these in as assets in your library. And then finally, there's also a tool built in um, that allows you to apply the clay effect to text, right? So basically what this does is this allows you to select your text and then you can come over here in your string to curves and you can adjust what the text is. So we can make this say like test text, something like that. And notice how this is going to adjust and you can change things like your character spacing and your line spacing. And then you can also apply different fonts to it as well. And so if you want to create this clay style text, you can use this tool in order to do that. 
And so I'm not 100% sure, but I think Southern Shoddy might be using this shader for a lot of the uh, a lot of the clay style things that he does. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it does give you kind of an idea of what can be created with this kind of thing inside of Blender. So like I said, for me, this tool is just kind of fun. Um, it's definitely kind of a niche thing for a certain kind of modeling, but the way that it sets everything up and allows you to focus more on your modeling and less on your material setup, I think is really cool. So I'll link to it in the notes down below in case you're interesting. If there's any interesting add-ons you'd like to see videos about, leave that in the comments below as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.